Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My son uninvited me from his wedding to please his fiancé's high society family, so I canceled their dream venue. I'm 53F, a widow, and I've been teaching economics at the local community college for longer than I care to admit. Life's been, well, it's been a journey. Anyway, I've raised Ivan on my own since day one. It hasn't always been easy, any single parent will tell you that. But we managed. I scraped and saved, worked extra hours, and did what I had to do to make sure he had a good life. And you know what? I thought I did a pretty decent job. Ivan grew up to be smart, kind, and hardworking. He landed a good job at a tech startup after college, and I couldn't have been prouder. Then, about two years ago, Ivan started dating this girl, Ellen. Now, don't get me wrong, Ellen's a nice enough girl, but she comes from money, like serious money. Her parents own half the high-rises downtown, and let's just say their idea of a casual weekend is my idea of a luxury vacation. At first, I was happy for Ivan. He seemed smitten, and Ellen was polite enough when we met. But then things started, changing. Ivan began making comments about our house, my clothes, even the way I speak. Suddenly, the home I'd worked so hard to make for us wasn't good enough. The furniture I'd saved for years to buy was embarrassing. The dress I wore to their engagement party was not up to standards. It hurt. God, it hurt so much. But I tried to brush it off. I told myself Ivan was just nervous about fitting in with Ellen's family that he'd come around eventually. But then, well, that's where this whole mess really starts. And why I'm here, pouring my heart out to a bunch of strangers on the internet, wondering if I'm the asshole in this situation. So, where was I? Right? Ellen? That's my son's fiancé. I changed the names, by the way. Ellen swept into our lives like a hurricane in designer heels. The first time I met her, she showed up at our house in a car that probably cost more than my annual salary. I remember thinking, well, this should be interesting. Now, I'm not one to judge people by their clothes or cars, but Ellen? Let's just say subtlety isn't her strong suit. She walked into our living room, looked around with this weird mixture of curiosity and pity, and said, oh, how quaint. I nearly choked on my coffee. But you know what? I tried. I really did. I made her favorite tea, asked about her family, her job, her hobbies. And she was polite enough, I suppose. But there was always this underlying tension, like she was afraid to sit on our couch in case some of our middle-classness might rub off on her designer dress. After they left, I thought that was that. Maybe not the best first impression, but we could work on it. Ha, huh. if only I knew. That night, Ivan called me. He was all worked up, talking a mile a minute about how we needed to upgrade our house. Apparently, my cozy little home that I'd poured my heart and soul into for the past two decades was an embarrassment. Mom, he said, you should see Ellen's parents' place. It's like something out of a magazine. Can't we at least get some new furniture? Maybe repaint the walls? Something to make it look less, you know less what, Ivan? Less like the home where you grew up? Less like the place where we celebrated your birthdays? where I nursed you through chicken pox and first heartbreaks I was furious. And hurt. God, I was so hurt. I told him, probably a bit too sharply, that I liked my house just fine, that some of that furniture had been picked out by his father, and I wasn't about to throw it out just to impress his new girlfriend. We had a huge fight that night. Our first real blowout in years. After that, Ivan rarely brought Ellen around. I only saw her a handful of times over the next year, usually at restaurants or cafes, always on her turf, never on mine. And each time I felt more and more like I was auditioning for a role in my son's life rather than just being his mom. Then came the engagement party. Oh boy, that was a night and a half. Ellen's parents rented out this swanky rooftop bar downtown, the kind of place where they have a dress code and the menu doesn't list prices. I spent weeks agonizing over what to wear, finally settling on a navy blue dress I'd bought for a colleague's wedding a few years back. I thought I looked pretty good, all things considered. But the moment I walked in, I knew I'd missed the mark. Everyone else looked like they'd stepped off a red carpet. Designer dresses, custom suits, jewelry that probably cost more than my car. And there I was, in my off-the-rack dress and costume jewelry, feeling like a fish out of water. Ivan took one look at me and his face just fell. He pulled me aside before I could even say hello to Ellen and hissed, Mom, couldn't you have made more of an effort? This is important. I was stunned. I did make an effort, Ivan, I whispered back. This is the nicest dress I own. He just shook his head, looking pained. Maybe we can find you something else to wear for the wedding, he muttered, before plastering on a smile and rejoining the party. I spent the rest of the night in a daze, nursing a glass of champagne that cost more than my weekly grocery budget, watching my son schmooze with Ellen's family and friends. He looked so at ease in this world of wealth and luxury, and for the first time I felt like I was looking at a stranger. As I drove home that night, I couldn't shake this sinking feeling in my gut. Something had shifted between Ivan and me, and I didn't know how to fix it. But that's where the whole wedding venue drama comes in, and honestly, I need another cup of coffee before I get into all that. 
This mom is emotionally drained, and we're not even at the worst part yet. So, about a month ago, Ivan calls me up out of the blue. He's all stressed out, talking about how they're having trouble finding the perfect wedding venue. Apparently, Ellen had her heart set on this gorgeous old estate just outside the city. Problem was, the owners weren't keen on renting it out for events anymore. Something about rowdy guests and property damage. Now, here's where I made my first mistake. I recognized the name of the estate owner. Let's call him Mr. Cooper. Turns out he was an old college buddy of mine. We'd lost touch over the years, but I figured it was worth a shot to reach out and see if I could help. I spent the next week calling in every favor I could think of, reminiscing about old times with Mr. Cooper and promising up and down that my son's wedding would be different. No property damage, no rowdy guests, just a nice, classy affair. Eventually, he agreed to rent out the estate. I didn't tell Ivan it was me who sorted it out. I wanted it to be a surprise, you know, a wedding gift from his old mom. I figured he'd be touched when he found out after the big day. About a week after I'd secured the venue, Ivan shows up at my door. He looks, I don't know, uncomfortable nervous. I invite him in, offer him some coffee, but he just stands there in the hallway, shifting from foot to foot. And then he drops the bomb. He tells me, in this weirdly formal voice, that he and Ellen have been talking, and they think it would be best if I didn't attend the wedding. Apparently, I wouldn't fit in with their crowd. Ellen's family was concerned that my presence might make some of their high-society guests uncomfortable. I just, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, my own son uninviting me from his wedding. I must have looked like I'd been slapped because Ivan started backpedaling, saying how they'd have a small family ceremony later, just for me. As if that made it any better, I started crying. I'm not proud of it, but the tears just came. And you know what Ivan did? He got frustrated, started telling me I was being selfish, that I should understand how important this was for his future, that if I really loved him, I'd step aside gracefully. I was devastated, heartbroken, but more than that, I was angry, furious even. This boy that I'd raised, sacrificed everything for, was tossing me aside like yesterday's garbage, because I wasn't high class enough for his new family. So I did something I'm not proud of, something that, looking back, might have been an overreaction. But in that moment, hurt and angry as I was, it felt like the only thing I could do. I called Mr. Cooper, told him everything, about how my son had uninvited me from the wedding, about how his new family was ashamed of me. Mr. Cooper was appalled, said he couldn't, in good conscience, host a wedding for someone who'd treat their mother that way. The next day, Ivan got a call. The estate was no longer available for his wedding, no explanation given, just a polite cancellation and a refund of his deposit. I know, I know it was a petty move, but I was hurting so bad and it felt like the only way I could strike back at the son who seemed to have forgotten everything I'd done for him. Of course, it didn't take long for Ivan to put two and two together. He came storming over to my house, all red-faced and yelling about how I'd ruined everything, how Ellen was in tears, how her parents were furious, how all their fancy invitations were useless now. He demanded I fix it, begged me to call Mr. Cooper back to make it right, but I just couldn't. The damage was done, both to their wedding plans and to our relationship. I told Ivan that maybe this was a sign, that if he was so ashamed of his own mother that he'd uninvite her from his wedding, maybe he wasn't ready to get married at all. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.